Welcome to 5 Things to Know for Tokyo 2020. My name is Ken Hanscom and I bring you the latest news and stories happening on the road to Tokyo 2020 in 2021. This week, all anyone wants to talk about is whether or not international spectators will be allowed at Tokyo 2020. And it's a difficult conversation with many people I talk with, not understanding how it can be under consideration with all the positive news we have here in the United States. Specifically with President Biden continuing to announce that vaccinations will be available for all Americans by the end of May, and the population can be entirely vaccinated by the end of June, more than a month before Tokyo 2020 starts. But alas, Tokyo 2020 is in Japan and not here in the US, and there are a lot of complexities involved. So over the next few minutes, I'm gonna take you over the kind of the five key things that are really happening right now and answer some of the questions that many of you have. Now let's get on to number one. So let's start with a current status. What is the current status of spectators for Tokyo 2020? The current status is unknown. And what has been said uh, is that that decision will be made in just a few weeks on March 25th, with the committee wanting it to be decided before the torch relay kicks off and starts its journey to Tokyo. And as part of that, what has been happening over the past week or so is that numerous uh, media and news outlets are reporting that it has already been decided that international fans will not be able to attend. Now yesterday, as part of the IOC session, it was clear that decision had not been made yet, and a lot of folks in, in terms of the General Assembly were making pleads in terms of really considering some of the impacts that could happen if international spectators are in fact not allowed. But this is not a very simple problem. It's actually very complex of many layers, and let's talk about that in number two. When we talk about international spectators, it's a very broad group, and that group can be broken in to multiple additional categories. First, there's people who are ticket holders that got them through the public sale. So that's one category. Another category would be sponsors. Sponsors who, as part of their sponsorship of either a national team, a federation, or even Tokyo 2020, have groups of tickets in terms of which they've given out or could give out to various people. Then you also have any other hospitality or delegations that are being run by uh, national Olympic committees. And so there are groups uh, that need to support the athletes, that need to, uh, to support the teams that are there, why they're in country. And so when we talk about international spectators, people think about, you can think about those three categories. What in terms of what looks like is being decided in terms of March 25th is whether that first category, right? That first category of, if you buy a ticket through a public sale, through a authorized ticket reseller, whether or not you may be allowed to attend with your tickets Tokyo 2020. The other two, there's still a whole lot of decisions to be made in terms of if or not those, those will be considered, and if so, at what levels those may be considered. And in all of these groups, it includes everything from support staff, to coaches, to friends and family, uh, to folks like you and me who, who are international spectators. So when we talk about international spectators not being allowed, it's specifically that very first category. If you bought a ticket from a public on sale anywhere in the world and not directly from, from the committee, those are the tickets that are being talked about in terms of not being allowed uh, at Tokyo 2020. So let's move on to number three. So what about ticket revenue? One of the major news pieces has been, well, there's $900 you know, million dollars of ticket revenue that's expected from international spectators as part of the Tokyo 2020 plan. You know, if we cancel all those international uh, spectator tickets, won't that leave a huge uh, hole? Well, no, that's actually not the case, right? So what they're not saying is, they're not saying that they are canceling the capacity associated with those international spectators. That's an entirely different matter. So if they cancel all these tickets that are from, from the authorized ticket resellers throughout the world, they can simply resell those within the Japanese market and so that locals can attend Tokyo 2020. So what will determine whether or not there is a revenue shortfall is not international spectators, at least in terms of ticket revenue, right? Capacity is going to be to determine that. And so April, May, June, July, we may learn more and more. And if it ends up being 50% capacity, the capacity is going to determine the revenue loss, assuming the committee doesn't sell those smaller number of tickets for more money uh, because of the reduced capacity. Where the pain will really be felt is with the hundreds of thousands of local small businesses, with hotels, you know, cabs, airlines, restaurants, 
those are the places where the revenue shortfall would happen as many of those businesses has really been counting on maybe a once in a lifetime bump, especially coming out of the pandemic in terms of having recovery. That's where the real revenue loss would happen and that would be there locally, uh, specifically in, in Tokyo, but maybe also outside somewhat in terms of any tourist attractions or, or whatnot. So let's move on to number four. Another question I've been getting a lot this week, well, Ken, is this premature to make the decision now? And what I can say is from an operational standpoint, given my experience in large scale events that my company um, and I've managed over the years, this, this does seem a bit early. I think the decision could be made much later, but that's a very nuanced point because that's purely from an operational standpoint. When you're organizing large events like Tokyo 2020, you really um, have a lot of different things in play and sometimes sooner making these decisions, especially before the tor uh, torture relay, gives the committee in terms of execution a lot more in terms of certainty that they have in terms of how they can move forward all the way through July. But you know, one of the problems could end up happening is that we could be looking at a Euro with international fans in June followed by a Wimbledon with full and international fans in July, then followed by a Tokyo 2020, which you know it may look like that decision was made pre prematurely if those two major international events do allow international fans in to run up to that. So that's really, um, I think, when some of the, you know, people will look back and say hindsight's 2020 in terms of that. But right now it's very difficult because it's nuanced because there's so many different things in play in current th including the current state of the pandemic in Japan. Let's move on to number five. People are also asking me, many of you are asking me about refunds. What about refunds? And this is also, it seems very simplistic, but it's also somewhat challenging and complex. And the reason being is this, while an IOC member yesterday said, of course there will be full refunds for, for tickets for spectators if they're not allowed to attend, that can be true, but also some of that depends on the, the ATRs or the authorized ticket resellers. And in the previous refund cycle, many of them did keep the 20% handling fee as part of, part of those returns. And so that still has to be decided and that still has to be worked out. But that's just also the tip of the iceberg. Uh, many accommodations, hotels, flights, uh, you know, potential tours and tourism and other special events have all been prepaid. Mega events like the Olympics are almost always prepaid. And some people have prepaid, prepaid uh, years and years in, in advance. And as part of that, um, what they uh, you know have done is said, hey, I'm gonna prepay and there are no refunds for cancellations in those cases. So it's not just simplistic about uh, tickets and the specifically ticket refunds. Rather, we also have to look down the chain. Our hotel's also gonna uh, offer um, full refunds uh, for people running a hotel, our tour companies, et cetera, et cetera. And I, will they even be able, will they have the financial ability to offer those refunds? So the impact of Tokyo 2020 potentially canceling uh, the ability for international spectators to attend is pretty significant, both in terms of not just operationally, but also financially and kind of the reverberations beyond tickets and other types of things like accommodations probably being the biggest thing out there uh, in terms of what also needs to be handled as part of that. So that's kind of the summary. I think the major points to be watching for over the next couple of weeks, I'll continue to keep things updated, both in terms of video and on my Twitter feed. And we're all looking forward, I don't know if we're looking forward to it or not, but we're all looking towards March 25th in terms of the date um, where we're most likely to at least get some guidance, maybe certainty in terms of at least what's happening with the public on sale tickets for international spectators. So stay tuned. I look forward to keeping in touch with you.